Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today is another AMA episode. That is, Ask Me Anything. I love to answer your questions, and if you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to Victor at VictorJM.com. That's Victor at VictorJM.com. David asks, I know that every year you have a goal-setting workshop. You most likely establish some very detailed short- and long-term goals. How have these goals been impacted with the current change in world events? Well, David, that's a great question. 2020 is emerging for many as one of the most uncertain years in recent memory. It started with the COVID-19 pandemic back at the end of January, and last week it was Hurricane Laura, decimating one of the communities that I have several projects underway in. I would not have predicted that I would be spending days with my mental energy consumed by the hurricane and its aftermath. As you rightly pointed out, I'm a huge believer in goal setting. In fact, one of my goals this year is to hold my annual goal setting workshop in the first week of December. We plan to hold it in the beautiful Banff National Park area where we have a portfolio of vacation properties and we can minimize the risk of disease transmission. But from where things sit right now, I'm not sure we will even get to hold a face-to-face event. I can tell you it's difficult to hold an effective event that requires deep introspection when done over a virtual environment. There's simply too many distractions in the home office. We will see if we get to hold the goal-setting workshop this year or not, and if so, how we will do it. So back to your question. In the last week of November of 2019, I spent three days on the beach in Mexico with a small group of like-minded entrepreneurs setting goals. It's a deep exercise in which you focus on getting alignment of your values. Now, there's two types of goals you can set. You can set attainment goals. These are goals that have a tangible outcome. For example, you might set a goal of buying a new house or buying your first investment property in 2020. That would be an attainment goal. A second type of goal is a habit goal. And this is where you might set a goal of meditating daily or running two miles each day or getting eight hours of sleep. That's a habit goal. So when we talk about goal setting in 2020, we need to look at both attainment goals and habit goals. In my case, Most of my attainment goals for 2020 are progressing, but they're delayed. But the truth is, we're still on track to accomplish these goals one way or another at a later timeline. One thing that many people struggle with is abandoning a goal when the original objective can no longer be met in the timeline. In our culture, we have a highly competitive social conditioning on ideas like success and failure. So much of that definition is based on comparison culture. Did you meet your objectives for the quarter? Did you win the basketball game? Did you meet your sales quota for the month? On July the 1st, we reviewed the book The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek as our book of the month. In that book, Simon distinguishes between the finite mindset and the infinite mindset. In the infinite mindset, you're not playing the win-lose game. You're playing the game of continuous improvement. You're focusing on how you're using your most precious resource, that is time. But when things take longer to complete, you end up multitasking. And when projects or deliverables get stuck, whether it's because of the pandemic or any other reason, multitasking forces the effort to multiply. Intuitively, it might not make sense that effort multiplies, but it does. Why would it take longer? I'll give you a simple example that illustrates the point. Let's say you have a task of painting a room. And let's say that you have two choices. In one case, you're limited to working on painting for 30 minutes at a time. It takes you five minutes to get set up for painting, changing into your painting clothes, opening the can, mixing the paint, and putting down the drop cloth. And then at the end, it takes you about 10 minutes to clean up from painting, washing your brush, cleaning the roller, maybe wrapping the roller in plastic so it doesn't dry out. All of this takes time. So out of your 30 minutes, you're only going to get about 15 minutes of productive painting time. In that 15 minutes, you might only get one wall painted out of a total 30-minute session. And if you're going to be putting two coats of paint, the entire room is going to take you a total of four hours to complete. On the other hand, if you had a fan circulating in the room and you could take the job to completion, you might get started on the second coat by the time the first coat is dry. You could get the entire job done in about two and a half hours. You're losing too much time to context switching. The fact is, much as we would like to be in control of our lives, there are some things we can control and others that we can't. Getting clear on what we can control is essential to making choices. It's easy to get into a mindset that says, your hands are tied. Well, the truth is, you have a lot more choice than you might think. Surprises can invert your priorities in the short term, and in an uncertain environment, my focus is on my habit goals. So as you think about that, 
pay close attention to the habits that are grounded in your values on a day-to-day basis. I want to thank you, David, for a great question. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.